here's the thing. You met him when you were 16, a time in your life when things drifted about without any expiration dates in sight, when consequences weren't apparent. And for that, I do not envy you. You also met him at a time when your first love, a reckless boy a year your junior, had tainted the waters and coated grease on your arms, making it harder to wear your heart on your sleeve. It's a pity, because the one you met was so genuine, and his intentions were pure. He was a friend of your first love's older brother, visiting from out of town for the summer. It's a pity he didn't step into view earlier. Perhaps then he would have received the coveted feel of first love, that unadulterated, unlimited emotion without any local precedents to keep it in check. Because you liked him. Your heart knew it. Your brain knew it. You just had a hard time translating it. He was nothing like first love. His face held a subtle handsomeness that peeked out at his most candid moments. He had a wit about him, and furthermore, he liked you. He put up with you at your coldest, when first love felt no interest in you at your most charismatic. My God, girl, you were an idiot. You walked the shoreline with him. You sat next to him on Sunday nights. You laughed and you smiled. But you showed no restraint for social pleasantries. You spared no expense to keep him unimpressed. But it was too late for that. Perhaps in the end, you two would have never worked out. He lived out of state, and he'd be going to college soon enough. But you don't think about it in those terms, do you? And he loved to toss you over his shoulder, and you loved to laugh along with it. Because, for a moment, he owns you. And you were powerless to say otherwise. And you liked it that way. You didn't want a choice. You didn't want a chance to say no. Even in the form of never saying yes. There is one night that you always have dancing in the corner of your mind. It's surreal, really, and if I wasn't there myself, I wouldn't have believed it happened. But you were laying there, in the hammock in the backyard of your first love's lot, with the new guy by your side. It was midnight, and everyone else had gone inside. The full moon was your only source of light, and it fell lightly, in shades of blue on you two. He was holding you, and you could feel his heart break. But you didn't have enough sense to create the correct combination of words, words you knew even then you had in you, to reverse the effects. But what did you say? I wouldn't be here if I didn't feel something. My friend, you are quite the Casanova. You started shivering, and he kissed your forehead, and that's all he ever did, or dared to do. And soon enough, he stopped returning. He went to his state, and you stayed in yours, and that night was the closest you two ever got. So how long has it been then? Five years? Six? Eight? You're a grown woman with a nine to five and a live-in boyfriend. He has a subtle charm that comes out at his most candid moments. He kisses your forehead when you're upset. He wants nothing but to love you, even at your coldest. And you heard through the grapevine that the one who got away is now working in the same city as you. 
So what do you do? You leave for work early. You get home late. Some days you don't even have lunch. You just spend your time wandering around the downtown area, hoping to run into him, hoping to breathe life from something from your adolescence. But what you don't see is how beautiful you already have it. That mistake at 16 has kept you from forever making it again. You've learned. And that was his only purpose to you. You needed it. The same way you needed first love. Even second and third love. But especially your boyfriend. The one you've grown to accustomed to. Where does he fit into all this? And what happens if the one who got away collides with your wander? Will you nervously talk? Will he tell you he's married? Will you apologize for something that most elementary school children weren't even alive for? And will you leave your boyfriend? Or would you date him, seduce him, behind your boyfriend's back? You still have his number. But you don't call. You have his email. But you don't write. Instead, you wander the downtown streets with your head in your dreams and your eyes clouded over. So that's why nothing I say will ever affect you. Unrequited love only works because there's nothing parallel to destroy it. What good is love if you can touch it, use it, Grow too comfortable with it over time. The excitement in the ever alien anatomy. The mystery of his mannerisms and speech. Where is the adventure in a body you can map out, domesticate, civilize? So honey, I tell you this. God help you if you ever do run into him again.